I did Rick. So we're in the plec room now. Oh, plecking, okay. So the plecs are the machines that do the fingerboard leveling. You know, they level the, the frets and then they profile the frets. And then lastly, they slot the nut. So we started using these uh, in the early 2000s. We started with one machine. Now we have eight in this room and we have two more that we're expanding the room. Wow. So we're gonna have uh, 10 of them in this room. Each machine is over 200,000. So it's a big investment, wow. but it is very, very accurate because now all this is you know, CNC controlled. Yeah. And then uh, it's just a lot faster than people can do it, you know, because this average cycle time is only eight minutes. Wow. So again, every Gibson, whether it's you know Gibson USA or Custom Shop or Montana, all Gibson guitars go through the Plex machine. Every single one of them. Wow. Yeah, so we have that guaranteed accuracy. Wow. So how it works, we'll put it in that fixture there, and there's gauges on there, and that'll be we'll adjust the neck to simulate that string string tension on the neck. And specific fixtures for each model are installed on the guitar. Loaded in the machine, tensioned, and then the guitar is located, uh, put in the plec machine. The plec machine then scans the neck, and it has a plunger that follows the string path of every string. And just like my finger's doing, it hits a fret, and every, fr every time it hits a fret, it's moving up and down, and it records that movement. And then when it's done, it'll come back and start machining each fret. It'll level it and profile it at the same time. So it took all those readings and then comes back? Yeah. When it's done, it has a complete digital topographical map of that fret surface, which is a lot of information. And then it comes back one at a time, and it might take one thousandth off of this side, maybe two thousandths here, maybe skip the middle and come back and take three thousandths here. So it's basically here. perfect, but it's yeah. done wow. And then it does that to every fret, and then lastly, it'll slot it to ensure that all strings are on center with that neck. And it just saves time. Then when we get into final assembly, then the adjusters will do the final shaping and then take it home. Oh, yeah. So that's a lot of work in eight minutes. That's amazing. You know, if you don't have the plug machines, you have to do it by hand. So there, you know, you'd put the guitar on a work surface and you'd use a honing block. So it'd be similar to doing it like this, and you'd have to get a straight edge and adjust your neck straight, hone it manually like that, and then come back with a crowning file, which is concave, and then file each fret to get that profile without hitting the very top. So it's very laborious and prone to human error. Not to say you can't do it that way. Uh, I still take great pride in my fret work, but uh, you know when you're running uh, production in guitars when it's very critical you want optimum playability the plec will facilitate that how many guitars will you typically have come out of here a day per day right now we're looking at around 400 or so wow. might be a little bit more we have an initiative to raise it you know because we have a lot of back orders yeah. so uh, wow. and and it determ it's dependent on the product mix too uh, you know some years ago we were doing upwards of you know 700 guitars a day but there were a lot more satins. Okay. And with more satins, you can get more through. Okay. So right now it's around four. And yeah. did you say that, the, so you're getting a few more plucking machines, but the yeah. backlog is ultimately in trying to train some extra Well, it's, it's everything, it's yeah. everything. So it's, it's the plant cap, uh, capacity and it's the employees, you know? Uh, they take a long time to train, in, depending on the department. And you just can't arbitrarily get X amount of people off the street and then turn up the daily number. Right. You got to make sure that your quality is maintained, that all the skill uh, sets are in place, and gradually increase it like that. And 2020, in your experience in 42 years, that surge in sales, is yeah. that unprecedented? Have you seen anything like that in your career where so many no. people wanted to start playing? No, that was, that, was, uh, that was completely unheard of. And, and with Gibson, prior to that, uh, we had certain years where uh, the previous leadership felt we needed to be more tech technology centered. So we had a lot of features that kind of fell short in the public's uh, 
expectation of what we should be doing, right? So this things like the, the, infamous robot tuners. the robot tuners and things like that. We had this adjustable nut and very wide necks, things like that that were people, the bottom line was no one was asking for it. They just felt that the market should have it. Interesting. So once the new leadership you know, started coming into place, I created a bucket list of uh, things I wanted to change. And then once you know, I met Cesar and JC, we had a meeting, told them about the list, and we said, yeah, that's the direction we need to move. And then later on, then we started implementing that. Then, uh, then I had the idea, let's split the product line between original and modern, so that way the people who want our historic models can have them, yeah. and, and we appease everyone who was asking for that for years. Yeah. And then that allows us to do modern guitars and satisfy all the younger players who want newer features yeah. and newer colors and things like that, that maybe their dads or uncles didn't have, you know, they, don't, they want to cut their own path. So now we have freedom to do both. So that was really, really huge. So ever since we debuted that, it's been unprecedented, unprecedented growth. And then uh, our quality levels, you know, have been tightened up, you know, because of all the awareness. And then this past year with the pandemic created an incredible guitar boom for everybody, uh, you know, because people were quarantined. So that just uh, inspired a lot of people to play a lot more. Sure. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a crazy couple years for sure. Is there anything on your short bucket list now, things you want on your shopping list that you're really looking forward to in the next couple of years? Or you there, think you guys have hit, I mean, I think your product mix, and you guys are like firing on all cylinders. Yeah. And it makes so much sense, and it's some of the greatest guitars we've ever played from Gibson. So. There's, there's, uh, there's several models that we've already initiated that we'll be bringing in, in the near future but we got to wait for the timing because it's not fair for our, our dealers and customers to just put out new models when we still can't fulfill the oh. orders on the old ones, right? Yeah. So we're trying to balance that. And uh, so we have a lot of things already in progress. And then there's a lot of stuff in discussion. So yeah, we're still looking to the future for sure, but we just have to bring it to the market at the appropriate time. So it's, it's uh, in answer to your question, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And then I have certain features and certain things I would still like to do, but uh, when the timing is right, yeah. yeah. It's a good time for Gibson. Well, it goes both ways because, yeah, there's a lot more people wanting to play guitars, but a lot more people are buying Gibson guitars because they're just making fantastic guitars. Yeah, and yeah. The product mix really seems right. So. Yeah, that, that was very, very important. And, and really all that was, uh, for me, was just listening to dealers and, and customers yeah. and reading forums. And it's, like I said, I created that list, you know, this bullet point list of features that I, I'd hear yeah. over and over and over. Yeah. You just give people what they want. That's, interesting. that's so, as uh, simple as it is. Okay.